Do you guys remember way back in 2019 when AMD had introduced the Radeon RX 5500? The whole point of this flaming fast GPU at the time was intended to attract the attention of the mainstream gamers who had a moderate budget to spend on a GPU. But fast forward three years and a whole pandemic later, the question begins to arise about whether or not the performance of the 5500 is better whenever compared to the more powerful GeForce GTX 1660 from Nvidia. So do either of these cards even hold up in 2022? Which one comes out on top? And is it even worth it to still slap down a couple hundred bucks on these bad boys despite the current GPU shortage? Well, let's find out. Kicking things off with the GTX 1660 from Nvidia, this card is a formidable competitor for your gaming money. This graphics card was released back in March of 2019, and if you're looking for a GPU with the most bang for your buck with its price tag in the middle of the MSRP road, the question now becomes, which card should you get? And in today's video, we're gonna compare these two graphics cards to see which is the best for you by comparing the features and benefits of the RX 5500 and GTX 1660 in three different categories feature tech, game performance, and power consumption as well as heat output. The features. AMD's Navi 14 XTX GPU is identical to the version of Nvidia's Turing TU116-300A1 chip, which was used in the 1660. Now, both GPUs do have 1,408 cores, and despite the fact that it runs at a faster frequency and generates a greater peak floating point performance, 5.2 T-flops compared to GTX's 1665, the GDDR6 memory modules, which are found in the 5500, are significantly faster than the GDDR5 memory, which was used back in the 1660. Now, NVIDIA does have a much larger memory bus, which is 192 bits, compared to AMD's memory bus configuration, which is only 128. However, the faster memory more than makes up for the difference in bus size. Also, the Navi 14 XTX has 224 gigabits of memory bandwidth to work with which is far higher than what the TU116 delivers, which is just 192 gigabits. The Radeon RX 5500 XT is also available in four gigabytes and eight gigabyte configurations. However, for the purpose of this comparison, we're gonna be concentrating on the eight gigabyte version here. And the GTX 1660 has a memory capacity of six. By the numbers, the AMD RX 5500 XT appears to be the superior GPU here. In addition to having a faster clock speed, a faster boost clock speed, and even a much higher theoretical performance limit, it is built using a more compact and productive technique. Not only that, but it has a major advantage all thanks to the larger capacity and faster GDDR6 memory. But does that really translate into better gaming performance? Soon we're gonna find out, but before that, let's talk about some other software capabilities that we will find present in both GPUs. The software tech. For Radeon's RX 5500, AMD provided a wide range of software options and functionalities. You can end up altering the graphical settings for your games, view performance reports, and even game states, plus updating your GPU drivers with the help of the company's Radeon software. In addition to all this, you're even able to monitor the temperature of your GPU as well as the fan speed and voltage. Additionally, users can launch games straight from the Radeon software dashboard, all while using the Adrenaline 2020 edition of the Radeon software. Plus, it is even compatible with many major streaming networks, including Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, Facebook, and more. Plus, it includes integrated media capturing and game streaming features, like the ability to take screenshots, videos, and quick GIFs. Additionally, AMD has a feature that's known as Game Boost, which monitors your frame rate and automatically adjusts the resolution of your games so as to enhance its speed. Doing so is not only gonna adversely affect the overall visual experience, the Radeon RX 5500 graphics even supports a technology known as Radeon Anti-Lag. What this tech essentially does is eliminate input lag by regulating the queue of work which is supplied to the CPU and guaranteeing that the CPU can't get ahead of the GPU. Additionally, Radeon Imaging Sharpness utilizes contrast adaptive sharpening in conjunction with GPU upscaling so as to generate more graphics when playing games. The GeForce Experience, which is the software NVIDIA offers for its GPUs, is similar to AMD's Radeon Software Adrenaline. 
and enables you to keep your drivers up to date, provides game setting configurations optimized for performance, and even starts your games from the GeForce Experience dashboard. The software, which is developed by NVIDIA, supports capabilities like media capture and game streaming, and these functions connect with major streaming services. The GeForce GTX 1660 fully utilizes NVIDIA's NVAC hardware encoder technology, which helps to reduce the CPU overheated associated with software encoding. This even allows for improved performance, and NVAC enables your central processing unit to be able to communicate with your GPU via a single set of instructions, which the GPU can then utilize to output your display and be able to broadcast without affecting performance. The GeForce Experience also incorporates NVIDIA's powerful screenshot capturing technology, which is known as NVIDIA Ansel. This software allows you to enable capturing of very high-end photos of supported games, up to 33 times of 1080p, and is included as part of the GeForce Experience. Ansel also has the capability to record 360-degree images and free camera capture, which enables the player to take pictures from its perspectives which aren't available in the game itself. Even better yet, Ansel supports the raw EXR output, enabling you to adjust the image during post-processing, such as producing HDR-enhanced photo versions. Gaming Performance Tom's hardware put both GPUs through 11 games with varying degrees of difficulty and compare the results. Both GPUs were able to maintain an average of 60 FPS in various games like Division 2, Gears of War 5, Strange Brigade, Far Cry 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Final Destiny 14, Forza Horizon 4, and Battlefield 5, with the graphics setting turned all the way up to their highest possible levels. Now, they were forced to reduce the settings to medium to be able to get the bare minimum of 60 FPS per second when playing more demanding games like Borderlands 3 and Metro Exodus. Ghost Recon Breakpoint was likewise an extremely demanding game, and the Radeon card could not reach more than 50 FPS on max settings. On the other hand, the GTX 1660 had an average frame rate of 58.7 FPS whenever the game was set to max settings. Keep in mind that both cards do produce an acceptable performance for 1080p gaming. Nevertheless, the GeForce card did outperform the Radeon card in all of our tests at medium settings, except for two of the tests, which AMD won by a margin of less than 1% in each of these cases. The 1660 does typically maintain a lead of at least 5% in testing, with maximum settings over the RX 5500. NVIDIA's configuration appears much more capable of handling games with much more maximum graphics settings enabled than AMD ever does. Power Consumption and Heat Output On the budget end of the GPU market, the amount of power consumed shouldn't be a major worry here, as the GPU of this caliber doesn't really consume anywhere near enough power to produce a significant change in the various configurations of your system settings. For the best performance of these GPUs, AMD and NVIDIA does recommend a power supply of at least 450 watts. The TDP rating of AMD's Radeon RX 5500 is 130 watts, while that same rating for the 1660 is 120. In practical use, the power consumption of the Radeon GPU is significantly lower than 130 watts, except when it's under heavy loads. Now, don't get us wrong, you're probably not going to be too concerned about the power requirements for these cards, but hey, a larger power draw does mean a higher heat output, which will probably be of greater concern to you. The amount of power either of these cards needs to function properly is just so minimal as to be even inconsequential. In contrast, the Radeon RX 5500 from AMD does have a lower heat output, which is likely helped by the fact that it's manufactured using a smaller 7 nanometer tech. What this does is it provides AMD an advantage in this particular category. So which one is better? In general, AMD's GPU is a pretty solid card, but it's not quite the same with the level of performance that NVIDIA's has. Therefore, if you're interested in purchasing a GPU right now, you should try to go for the GTX 1660. So there you have it, folks. That's the difference between the GTX 1660 and RX 5500. Let us know in the comment section below what your opinions are about these cards. And of course, if you did enjoy the video, then please consider giving a big thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content just like this. And don't forget to ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more amazing content updates from us. Until next time, folks, stay safe and stay informed.